Hello everyone, Back Photography here, back with another video, and today we're going to be talking all about the 85mm lens and why it is the king of all portrait lenses. We're going to talk about what it means to be an 85mm lens, we're going to talk about why it is one of the best portrait lenses that you can use and how versatile it is and how to use one, and we're also going to be looking at a behind the scenes photo shoot of me using just the 85mm lens in a few different ways to get some really nice portrait photos. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to stick around to the end because we're going to be doing an entire photo shoot from start to finish and then we're going to be editing some raw files together at the end and there'll be a link to all the raw files in the description of this video. So first things first, what is an 85mm lens? Well, 85mm refers to the focal length of the lens and an 85 is quite a narrow focal length. So your eyes can see somewhere between a 40 and 50 mil focal range. So an 85 mil is going to be a little bit more tight than what you typically see with your eye. And that means that there's going to be some more compression in the photo. Things in the background are going to look more blurry than they would with a wider lens. And things that are in focus are going to be a little bit more compressed, which is something that's going to be flattering to our model. And this is one of the reasons people really like 85 mil lenses. It's a really good lens for separating your subject away from the background. And you can do this in two ways. The first way is to shoot at a low aperture so that your foreground and background are really blurry, leaving only your subject in focus. When you do this, your viewer is directed to the subject because that is the only thing they can make out because of the lack of sharpness in the foreground and background. So you can use this technique by shooting at low apertures to make your subject pop from the image and leave all the distractions in the foreground and background blurry enough to no longer be distracting in your final image. And we can definitely see that technique being used in this photo here. We're shooting at an aperture of f1.4, which is the maximum aperture of my Sigma 85mm f1.4 art lens. And this is really blowing out the background into a beautiful, blurry, blobby mess. We can see here that even f1.4, Natasha here is incredibly sharp, and there is a huge amount of separation between her and the background, and her in the foreground as well. And one quick thing to think about when you're shooting at low apertures in particular, the further something is away in your photo, the blurrier it's going to be. And also the closer your subject is to your lens, the blurrier the background is going to be. So if I was shooting Natasha and she was 10 meters away from me, she would be in focus like she would be if she was close to me, but the background would be a lot less blurry than if she was just 50 centimeters away from the lens. So you don't always have to shoot at the lowest aperture, particularly when you're shooting really close to your subject. Because if you're shooting at f1.4 on an 85mm lens, at the shortest focusing distance of your lens, your depth of field is going to be so thin that you're going to struggle to even have all of the eye in focus. Here is a photo of Natasha at the minimum focusing distance on my Sigma 85mm f1.4 art lens. And if we zoom in, we can see that the depth of field is so narrow that her eyelashes here are in focus, but her iris isn't. So you can see just how razor thin the depth of field gets when you shoot at the minimum focusing distance of the 85mm lens and at f1.4. So how do we make the most out of this lens so we can get the most beautiful, sharp images possible? Ideally, you want to be shooting at at least 1 1 60th of a second when shooting with this lens, because the extra long focal length means that camera shake is going to be accentuated in your photos. If you can, using a tripod is going to eliminate this completely, but if you're shooting handheld like me, don't go below about 1 1 60th of a second, or maybe down to about 1 100th of a second if you have a really steady hand. If you want the viewer to get a scope of the background in your photo using an 85mm lens, you're going to have to move quite far away from your subject so that you can fit some of the background in frame. This lens is really good at taking close-ups of your subject, but it's also really good at getting a nice look at the background as long as you go further away from your subject. Another way that you can separate your subject from the background using this lens, or really any other lens, is having a different lighting condition on your subject compared to the background. So in this example photo, we have Natasha really illuminated by the sun, and the sun was behind a cloud, so it was giving us nice diffuse light on our subject, and then the background is slightly more dark compared to Natasha. And this really brings Natasha to the focus of the image. It draws the attention of the viewer, because the brightest thing in the image is always the first place that somebody is going to look when they're looking at a photo. So when you're shooting with this lens, particularly at low apertures, it is especially important to be focusing on the eyes of your subject so that the image can look nice and sharp and the part of the image that the viewer is going to be looking at first, the eyes, is nice and sharp and draws attention from the viewer. If the eyes are out of focus and something else on 
your subject's face is in focus, so this is going to be really distracting for your viewer because your viewer is going to be drawn to another part of your subject's features and not the place that you would tend to look when you look at somebody. As humans, we always look at somebody's eyes first when we're going to look at them or converse with them because somebody's eyes can tell you a lot about what they're thinking and feeling. So in a portrait, the eyes need to be in focus because this is where a viewer is going to look first and draw the emotion and understanding from a portrait. So now let's have a look at a few of the photos that I took on this photo shoot and then we're going to talk about one in particular. We're going to go through how I took this photo, the settings for this photo, and then we're going to jump into Photoshop and edit this photo as well from start to finish. If you're enjoying this content so far, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell as well. I really appreciate all the support and it really helps me in the YouTube algorithm. So let me know in the comments which one is your favorite photo. This is the photo that we're going to be talking about in this particular video and there's a few reasons why I've chosen this photo to highlight in this video as well. I like this photo because we're using both the really shallow depth of field but also the different lighting conditions to separate Natasha from the background and giving the viewer some indication on where they should be looking in the photo. I think that the composition of this photo is a good indication of the framing and distance you should be away from your subject when taking a shoulder length portrait. The image is relatively sharp with the eyes in a decent focus and the background is really really nice and blurry. We're also using a blurry foreground as well to separate Natasha even more from the foreground and background. Here are the settings in my camera for this photo. I was shooting at a aperture of f1.4, which is the maximum aperture of my lens, which means the most light possible is coming into my lens and to my sensor. This is going to give me the thinnest depth of field possible and really separate Natasha from the background. I'm using an ISO of 200, which is a nice low ISO. So I'm going to have a very clean image, clean signal going to my sensor, which means that I'm not going to have any noise in the shadows or clipping highlights. I'm using a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second because the amount of light in the area we were shooting in allows that. It means that I'm shooting at a nice fast shutter speed, not getting any motion blur in my image from camera shake or from Natasha moving around. If it was a little bit more dim in this area, I would have reduced my shutter speed to about 1 200th of a second. And if then it was still too dark, I would bump my ISO up until I had a nice exposure in my photo. One final thing I'd like to show you here is that I am able to get a nice catch light in Natasha's eyes from the sun because we were shooting with direct sunlight. And even though we were shooting with direct sunlight, the lighting is very nice and soft because the sun was low in the sky and also being diffused by a cloud. So you can get some really nice lighting environments just using natural light. And I would say that this photo actually looks like we used off camera flash with a big strobe and a large softbox when actually our strobe was the sun and the softbox was the cloud. So you don't need to have lots of big lighting equipment to take photos like this. Of course, it's very efficient to have those sorts of things and it can be very handy in certain situations, but you can still get beautiful portraits that are very beautifully lit just with natural light. So now let's jump into Photoshop and do the editing required on this photo to get it to look like this. Now remember there are links in the description to all the raw files from this photo shoot and also every photo shoot that I publish on YouTube. So make sure to check that out if you'd like to follow along with some editing. Okay, so now we're here in Photoshop and the first thing we're gonna do is add some clarity to the entire image just to make the mid contrast pop from the image. We're also going to make the color balance more yellow because it was quite late in the evening and all of that yellow color made our camera sensor um, shift everything more blue. I'm gonna also add some saturation and drop the highlights as well just to make those colors come out a little bit more. And then we're gonna drop all of the greens all the way down to yellow just to get a warmer, more yellowy, earthy color in the entire image. Next, we're just gonna reset all of our tools here. And now we're gonna drop the shadow a little bit and play with the exposure and clarity. 
and we're just going to brush in some more of those things into the hair just to make them stand out a little bit more because we were shooting with direct sunlight in the hair which meant that we lost a little bit of clarity in the hair okay so the next thing we're doing here is just zooming right into the eyebrows and then just adding a little bit more clarity into the eyebrows as well just going to do the same thing for the eyes as well just to make them pop a little bit more from the image and we're going to do the outlines of the irises as well okay so the next thing we're going to do here is just get the brush tool add some exposure and some clarity and some more yellow color and just add some more light around the area just to make the image look a little bit more bright and warm just making sure not to hit Natasha with this light, just trying to make the surrounding lights a bit brighter. Now we're going to add a whole bunch of vibrance. And we're going to drop the color balance into the greens and also make the image a little bit more yellow, just playing with those colors just to see what looks good. And we can always adjust them later, so just trying to make the colors perfect in this step. I'm going to drop those greens even lower now just to really remove all of the greens and make the image look much more yellow and warm. And now we're gonna drop the clarity almost all the way and we're gonna drop the blacks, shadows and exposure just so we can use the brush tool as a masking tool. And I'm just gonna mask all the areas of Natasha's skin that I would like to make a little bit more smooth. And this is a really rough guide. You don't have to do it this way, but um, for the video, this is just a really quick way to smooth the skin and make the skin look a little bit more appealing and just remove any blemishes or imperfections that you can see. So we're just making sure not to go over any of the hard lines we'd like to keep sharp because reducing clarity does soften the image. And that's basically how we're removing the imperfections. We're making the skin look softer and so the imperfections and blemishes look less pronounced. So don't go over the eyes, don't go over the hair, make sure the eyebrows stay out of it as well. Just the parts of the skin that we'd like to make smoother. We're also going to do the neck as well. This is just a quick and dirty way of smoothing skin in about 30 seconds. So we're going to drop the exposures, shadows and blacks now. And you can see as we play with the slider, the skin gets smoother or harsher. So the next thing we're going to do here is just add a little bit of clarity and shadow into the corners of Natasha's lips. And that's just going to make our lips look a little bit more big and also just draw attention to the lips which is one of the main facial features of Natasha. Now we're going to drop the clarity once more and just reset these shadows and just add a little bit more softness into the background so that Natasha is even more pronounced uh, in this image. Okay so that is pretty much everything we're going to be doing in Camera Raw. Now we're in native Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is use the patch tool here. Just remove any lines or imperfections from the skin. Now I'm going to fast forward this bit because it can get a little bit repetitive, but basically I'm using the patch tool to circle an area I would like to make smooth and then just dragging into an area that doesn't have that pattern to smoothen out the area. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is use the liquify tool just to move out Natasha's hair a little bit and make it look more thick and full. You want to make sure not to do this too much and just make subtle changes uh, because any major change might look a little bit strange, but just adding a little bit more length and a little bit more fullness to Natasha's hair is going to make a huge difference to the final product. It makes a person look a lot more healthy and a lot more um, aesthetically pleasing when they have nice, full and thick hair. Okay, so that's before and after. And you can see that that really makes a huge difference to the final image. So the next thing we're gonna do is just make a selection of Natasha. And once we've made a selection of her, we're going to click the select button in the top and then inverse. So now we have an inverse selection of uh, Natasha. So everything in this photo that isn't Natasha. Now we're doing select filter blur gaussian blur and just adding another pixel of blur around her just to make her pop even more from the subject and the final thing we're going to do here is just use the sharpen tool just to make her eyes look a little bit more sharp because they're not quite focused perfectly in this photo you can see that the nose hairs the hairs on her nose are in focus and her eyes are just slightly out of focus but i think we get away with it 
in this photo. So that's everything for this photo. I really hope you like it. If you haven't already, please leave a like and subscribe. So thank you very much for getting to the end. And also check out the raw files if you didn't edit along so that you can edit them in your own time. That's everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.